generally speaking, if there's a link, you know, look at that and and basically we're going to just put together these nodal patterns and phases and all of that stuff. Anyway, it's a good idea too, before you get into it, to start with the simplest orbital. So a lot of people will just pull up the drop down and like start with the first orbital, right? And it'll be like super complicated. It isn't really here, but, you know, like say... this is a pretty yeah, complicated looking orbital. Like this, you're not going to want to start here, right? Unless you had your eye maybe on the hydrogen and you were looking for all four hydrogens on the same side. But this, it's too complicated to start with, right? If you can eliminate the simpler ones first, and then you won't even have to, like, wrap your brain about like the complicated C, ones. C is very difficult. I wouldn't start there. Yeah, <laughs> agreed. D is, is, is looking pretty difficult. A seems like the easiest, right? Let's go with A. A seems very much so the easiest. What's, like jumping, what's jumping out at me is two things. One, the hydrogens have zero atomic orbital contribution to this molecular orbital. Okay, so clearly if we go here, we can see that these hydrogens... So which one would it be? What do you, what do you guys think? Which one would this one be? Because it, the hydrogens have zero contribution. I mean, that's one way you can solve it, but it, it's very conclusive. Three. Uh, the survey described Devashri. Devashri, got it. This, <laughs> this one is pi bond. Devashri. Or pi, it's yeah. a pi type of um, anti-bonding orbital. Yeah. You can anyway. that view, right? There's a plane, there's a node in the plane of the molecule. And it's a pi star, right? So it's the anti mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah. So as Dave said, no density on the hydrogens, which actually wasn't the way I was thinking about it. If you look, those look a lot like p orbitals, right? So on the basis of what's there, I mean, instead of what's not, the p orbitals can align along the z. So what Dave is showing with his mouse right now, they're aligned along the z, so they're pz orbitals. So look for the orbital that has only pz contributions, and you'll find it. And in fact, three is the only orbital that has any any Z contribution at all. So, so two me. pieces of evidence support molecular orbital being number three. All right, so we can go ahead and just put A as three. All right. Next. Next. Next, we're gonna have to start chunking through some of these. So, let's look at let's look at. I mean. For me, it's e really easy to look at the hydrogens because those are jumping out at me. For example, these hydrogens here are all the same phase. So it can't be one and it can't be two. You guys understand that that thought process. Because two of these hydrogens are positive and two of them are negative and same with this. We, we've already knocked out three. By default, what's orbital is, is number B. Or I guess it's orbital. Okay. Good. There, there's, I mean, the evidence is overwhelming. Right? So, alright, so that leaves us with two of the two. Mike, did you have anything to say? No. No. I just realized I was talking and I had my mic off. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, one time, hold on guys, you gotta, you gotta check this out. One time, I was uh, sharing my desktop and I was talking and Mike was talking at the same time but his mic wasn't on and literally like it, it, Mike and I must have been saying exactly the same thing because I was moving my mouse and like Mike hadn't said anything for like three minutes oh, God, yeah. and before I knew it Mike's like okay guys uh, I had my mouse off or my mic off for like the last three or four minutes. <laughs> Okay. Now as bad as the time I left my mic on by accident. Somebody had left the P3 assignment open. Oh, my God. <laughs> I remember that. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, my God. Dude. Uh, another horrible. thing here, let's, let's just not, let's focus on how to solve this question. And, you, you know, this you can solve question or molecular orbital B just by these LCAO coefficients. But let's go ahead and take a deeper analysis of the actual atomic orbital contribution to this molecular orbital. So as you can see here, this carbon, carbon one, and I'll go to transparent like I always do, yeah, has, good idea. What, has what type of orbital that's really dominating? And 
and you can look at the LCAO coefficients as well, but it's very striking to see this S orbital contribution here. Right. Uh, there is the, the blob you see around carbon-1. That's got to come from the S orbital, right? The P orbital would contribute a node at the nucleus, and there's very clearly not a node at the nucleus in this LO. But it, so there's got to be a huge S contribution. We're going to see an example of a P orbital. Uh, we can look at it in this nitrogen. Clearly, there is without a doubt a node oh. at this nucleus right here, right? And you can see that the, 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 the most significant contribution to nitrogen or from nitrogen is that PX orbital. And that would make absolute, absolute sense because there's a node right there. Now, B was 4, all right? Now let's go to C. What are you guys thinking now? Why don't you guys tell me what to do? The translucent here. There we go. Wouldn't the... Are you talking about the last question? Wouldn't the little... It depends on how far you make you, you make the cutoff. So if you if we enlarge the orbital, made it bigger, then eventually yeah, we would see that that node is not exactly on the nucleus, right? So a little bit of S character pushes the node sort of off the nucleus a little bit, or causes the orbital to become a little bit distorted. But the P character is actually what puts the node there. So think about it this way, right? You take a number. So the S character has some density at the nucleus. Let's call that 0.5. What's the character, what's the, what's the density from the P orbital at the nucleus? Zero. Multiply them together, what do you get? Zero, right? So you take any number, you multiply it by zero, you get zero. So anytime there's any P contribution, that's going to eliminate the node, but that's going to guarantee the presence of a node. Because the orbitals sort of multiply with each other instead of add. Does that make sense? That's sort of the way I think of it. So, check this out. If you were to actually do this calculation, as far as only, only from the nitrogen, and I'm going to grab my calculator. This is, this is the electron density, right? So, 0.128 squared. This this number here is 0 0.0151. One. I see where you're going. That, I mean, that's that's basically negligible. Um, Very small. Uh, electron density. Very small. From that, from that, and then 0.3818 squared. 0.145. I mean, that's ten a magnitude of ten yeah, times ten greater. One. Right. 10 to 1. 90% to 10%. Uh, okay. 95 5, you know. Yeah, so that's All this negligible. Exactly. So you got to think about it that way. Uh, anyway, if we go to orbital C, why don't you guys tell me how to approach this? How would you tackle C? Always go to translucent. Yes. Any thoughts? So you can see the atom numbers. Any thoughts? Come on. You want to help us out, guys? <laughs> Dave had some really good advice earlier when we first started about how to approach this orbitals like this. Durr. All these chips ever want is the answer. Why is it one? Why is it one? <laughs> how do you know? We, care. About. we don't care if it's one, four, three, two. We care why it's one. Okay, the hydrogens. So which yeah. hydrogens? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, that right there is basically the bigger ones are blue, and that would be H three and H four, and you would that's so no bigger. Dually. They have higher coefficients. They're positively charged or charged. They have positive coefficients, so they match H three and H four, and they're opposite. H5 and H6. So H5 and H6 six are smaller numbers, negative 0.16, and they match. They're both negative. Uh, basically, we don't even have to go to 
MOD, we don't even have to. But if we wanted to, what is, <laughs> what's, what's striking you about this one? I mean, you can still use the same analogy with the hydrogen, but also let's, let's look at the PY contribution. You can see that here, the N2 and the N3, or the carbon, have uh, atomic orbital contributions from in the PY direction. All right? So we don't even have to do that because we know. So basically, you spend your time very efficiently being sure of the first couple ones, and then there's a lot of room for, you know, I guess, I didn't even have to look at orbital B to know that 